Yes. So this is Ashish Tulshan, CEO of Postest. He'll be making a presentation uh, for emerging business models and uh, COVID challenges currently focusing on India. He has been running across 20 countries cloud kitchens. Go ahead, Hasis. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rajan. Um, hey, guys. Uh, um, thanks, to Mr. Rajan, for the opportunity to present. Um, I am Asif Kishan. I'm one of the founders at uh, a restaurant tech company called Coffee. We are, uh, uh, we are a company who does technology for the restaurant backend. We started as a foundation solution um, from almost nine years back and during nine years with January. And um, you know, eventually built out a full scale uh, you know, restaurant tech right from the foundation solution to backend kitchen control, inventory control, CRM, etc. It's a full scale suite of protein products which serves the uh, 8,000 customers spread across uh, 22 countries. Uh, we also pioneered cloud kitchen technology uh, from two years back. Uh, today, we power one of the largest cloud kitchen operations of all types uh, across the world, uh, running some of the largest and most well known making of the brand. This talk, I'm going to share my screen. This talk is going to be about. Uh Cloud kitchens. Um, yeah. Okay. I hope you guys can see it. Yes. Okay. So, um, guys, I think uh, just to we will start with exactly what the what the opportunity is about, and I can I can clearly see that uh, you know while cloud kitchens have really taken over. Um, the mind space, the mind share, uh, you know, globally now, and I think since pandemic hit, cloud kitchen became, uh, you know, the talk of the talk of every um, uh, every restauranteurs, every every new or old restauranteurs, um, uh, you know, mind across the world. And I think I think COVID has been a great leveler. Um, I mean, apart from all the bad it brought, I think I think some silver linings to this otherwise dark cloud are. That it it really made businesses think about their digital transformation. There were a lot of memes going around the internet which said who uh, led the digital transformation for your company, and the answer was COVID. But I think I I can't agree uh, you know any less because the amount of digital transformation we have seen across sectors, and especially in the food industry, uh, in my last ten years of uh, you know being at the helm of the industry, I've been a restaurateur myself before. This product was built uh, for my restaurant ten years back, so. So I, I think from that, uh, you know, to today and what happened in the last six, eight months alone, um, you know, is, is quite phenomenal. I really hope that world bounces back from uh, all the losses which COVID has given. But I'm very, very optimistic about that world is going to bounce back um, stronger and mightier uh, just because uh, world is more accustomed to or, or more inclined towards adopting technology now what exactly is the opportunity for uh, you know cloud kitchens i think i think cloud kitchens i will say that there are three kinds of broad uh, you know opportunities or, or rather business models in cloud kitchen which are prevalent right now one is an independent cloud kitchen model uh, you know we have, we have given example of fasos our homegrown uh, you know one uh, these are these are the cloud kitchen born uh, you know brands these are the brands who don't have a storefront who who never really uh, had a high street restaurant of all of any kind and they basically were born as a as a digital brand as a as a brand who um, you know got most of its orders or or customer acquisition through aggregated channels you've been ordering you know for fasos Barros, biryani and a lot of other brands you know they have from Sui, Zomato, and and this is just one example. Of course, there are tons of uh, you know other brands who were born on you know born as a cloud kitchen. Second is um, a model where delivery brands, uh, you know, delivery aggregators are spinning off brands. Um, you know, today Swiggy runs their own kitchen, Zomato runs their own kitchen. I'm not too sure if Zomato runs their own brands, but Swiggy has you know you know run has been running few brands. There are a lot of aggregators and other ancillary uh, you know businesses who have been serving restaurants now using that insight of plugging the gap in the market let's say there is an era in bangalore which is uh, 
which has a very high demand for asian cuisine but there is there are not many restaurants for some reason are serving asian that in that area people have figured out their opportunity they have launched a cloud kitchen specific, specifically for that aggregator for that platform to serve you know that particular area aggregators have also you know taken on 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 that bet and 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 cloud kitchens have brought in a very low cost of uh, experimentation uh, in in yesterday years if you had to really think about experimenting with a brown brand in a kitchen uh, the expense was is, was was much high and and when you open a high street restaurant with a certain brand with a certain positioning you can't really pivot that you can't really kill it and say hey okay if dosa did not happen i'll i'll sell pizzas or if pizzas did not happen i'll sell burgers i mean your your place gets labeled uh you know for a certain type and and the entire rebranding effort is too much i think digital made it really easy and the third model is the shared cloud kitchen model which i which which is which is true cloud kitchen or, or rather kitchen on cloud where l- people are doing infrastructure large co-working spaces for you know kitchens where restaurant owners who already know uh you know what recipe what product what menu uh they just send their team chefs uh in a pre uh, equipped kitchen and uh, they start preparing from there and they just s- switch on their listing for that particular area on the on the aggregator apps and and boom you you start getting the business immediately i think this is this is one of the phenomenas or or rather uh, you know business which is going to uh uh be, be the biggest driver of uh, you know how how cloud kitchens are going to prosper in in the country um let me let me help and dis- demystify cloud kitchen a little bit uh, you know for all of you and uh, i think uh, over last two years i've heard so many things about cloud kitchens i can i can i can just think about i, I mean I, i'll take you to a story back in 2017 there was a time when when we could clearly see that there was something very interesting happening in the restaurant space according to me restaurants are built are made up of four uh, uh, you know components one component is customer acquisition how do you acquire the customer how do you get the customer we saw that over years zomato swiggy food panda uber eats um, you know all these people started specializing in something which is you know customer acquisition um so much so that uh, almost it i mean restaurants or the brands lost the incentive to have their own app or have their own you know website because as a consumer i'm i'm still i'm 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 good with uh, you know always ordering through an aggregator app uh, the second piece is uh, you know what to cook which is ip which is intellectual property which is your brand which is your recipe which is your menu uh, so for example somebody you know made biryani so uh, or 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 somebody made a great pizza now that is their recipe that is their ip and they have already sold it they already have a market fit they already know that customers love that flavor love that taste they are ordering again that means your ip is set third component is logistics um, and payments I, I'll, i'll put these two you know together because somebody has to take that cooked uh, that that prepared food you know to the customer and uh, and and charge him and take the money uh, you know we also saw that specialized delivery players specialized logistic players you know started coming to the country and uh, you know it eased out restaurants further and restaurants started opting out of having their own delivery fleet either they started working with the aggregators delivery fleet or they started working with these specialized services uh, you know who were picking up food from the restaurant and then delivering it to your customer and the fourth uh, and n- not the last but not the least important is cooking the food actually preparing operations and i think uh, this was the last thing which was supposed to get uh, decoupled so i call it the massive decoupling of the restaurant customer acquisition logistics preparing the food and ip which is the recipe uh, um, and, uh, and 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 your brand and i think uh, i think this fourth piece is where a lot of kitchen operators and the cloud kitchen operators started coming in where they said hey if you give me your recipe i will also cook the food i will also cook food on your behalf 
if you think about it, it's not a new concept. That is exactly the definition of what franchising is. The uh, world has been taking McDonald's and Subway and Domino's and, and whatnot. Everybody's franchise, you know, since ages. What is franchise? Somebody sells you an IP, sells you a system, sells you, you know, how the restaurant is going to operate, how the brand is going to be positioned, how you're going to market it, how, you know, the pizza is going to be made, what kind of ingredients are going to go in there. They, they control it. You know, different brands control it to different levels, but they control it to deliver the same consistent, consistent experience to the end user. What is the manifestation of that in the cloud kitchen world? In the cloud kitchen world, the manifestation of the same model is uh, you set up a kitchen. I'll give you the recipe. I'll give you the brand name. I'm going to market it. I'm going to list it on the aggregators. I'm going to take care of all the customer acquisition. Um, I'm going to do all the tie-ups with the logistics players. You just own the kitchen. You do preparation, manufacturing of food for me. Again, same model has been you know, used in industrialization. Uh, you know, your, your Benetton t-shirts, your Nike shoes, your Reebok shoes, your Louis Vuitton bags are not really always prepared you know, by the factories in Italy or, or US or France. Uh, they might be, you know, Louis Vuitton bags might be getting manufactured in, in Kolkata or somewhere in West Bengal. Um, so so I, think, I think restaurant industry in a nutshell is exactly going through you know, that transformation where there is this massive decoupling which has happened. And I believe that, you know, it is going to open up so many opportunities for food entrepreneurs, for restauranteurs, for, for caterers, for hoteliers, for people in the food business of any kind and type. Um, you know, earlier you could only either do catering business or you could start a high street restaurant or a QSR. Now you can, you know, start multiple kitchens in certain areas for a restaurant. You can opt for only delivery side of the business for a, for a certain brand. I believe that, you know, very, very soon, some smart brands will start giving out franchises only for delivery part of a certain area uh, for, for, you know, for, for so many restaurants. And I think for, that is going to be a great opportunity for entrepreneurs. Um, you know, now you can actually start central kitchens wherein you can take franchisee of five different brands or five different cuisines and you can just make sure that your kitchen is actually cooking the food you can create such hubs across the city and you can become you know a master franchisee for for multiple brands uh, i think this decoupling is going to help a lot of smart entrepreneurs to pick and choose parts of this puzzle basis their expertise and execute while the brand owner while the recipe owner should actually do what they are really good at, which is, um, you know, doing R&D over recipe, building more products, getting new menu items, moving with the world, making sure that they do the quality control and quality check very, very well. Um, you know, the for me, Cloud Kitchen is not, I, I think I'll, I'll demystify a couple of myths uh, here. People have been talking about Cloud Kitchen as a cheaper alternative to the restaurant. It's not. It's absolutely not. The difference between a Cloud Kitchen and a restaurant is that restaurant you know, on a high street requires a capital expenditure in one shot um, you know, and a lower OPEX, a lower operational expense because you're, from that point onwards, your rent is fixed, your, your staff salary is fixed. Um, you know, you're not spending a ton on... Uh, packaging material because people are idly coming to your restaurant and eating so, so you're using the same utensils so a lot of operational cost goes down or fixed uh, but but very high capex to start with you need to do interiors you need to you know you need to brand it well you need to be on a high street you will pay a high rental etc vis-a-vis uh, -vis a cloud kitchen can be set up in one fifth the cost because you will be uh, not in the high street. You're not on the high street. You will be in the by lanes or the back lanes. Uh, you can be in an industrial area. You can. Uh, you don't need service staff. You don't need branding. You don't need ambience, etc. I think that's a no-brainer. But what is important is that your rental is not really fixed. You're paying rent on every order in the form of a customer acquisition cost or a Swiggy or a Zomato or an Uber Eats or somebody is going to charge you somewhere between 15% to as high as 30, 35%, um, uh, you know, on, on per order. And it is going to continue increasing per order basis. So if you are, your rent, your rental for customer acquisition is going to be uh, variable. You are going to spend a ton of money on packaging material, which is a very high percentage, you know, of that. Um, you know, net-net, what I can tell you is that 
in a in a rest in a in a high street restaurant fundamentally um, you know on a on a high side you can make 25 to 30% net uh, you know margins while uh, you know the same number for a cloud kitchen will fall short i mean lower than 15% and that too is a optimistic estimate in my experience practically people are not able to make more than 5% net in cloud kitchens the way they make better i mean more money from cloud kitchens is by doing 5x the volume so so 25% of x uh, rather uh, and and you know 5% of 25x uh, or 5x uh, is is what you should be looking for so cloud kitchen is an op, is a is a volume game it's not really a it's not really a cheap one uh, you know it's 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 harder to make money in cloud kitchen just that it's easier to do volumes there um increased delivery radius for a high street restaurant you have limited space in the kitchen you are supposed to also do the front uh, of the house uh, you know service you cannot just keep the kitchen for delivery um, and that also reduces a restaurant's ability to deliver you know for for more than 3 kilometers or 4 kilometers let's say um in in case of cloud kitchens you know people are historic i mean people have been able to increase their radius every time a swiggy uh, or a zomato tells you that oh you know we are not going to allow you in 3 kilometers but we are going to allow you in 5 kilometers um you know each kilometer increased in the radius adds a very very large area of impact for the restaurant and that is exactly where you know from you achieve those 3x 4x or 5x volumes you know in a cloud kitchen so for cloud kitchen it's really really about uh, you know being able to have a larger area of impact than you had in a high street restaurant if you are not having it then there is no point opening a cloud kitchen and uh, you know on the, on that note i'm also going to you know quickly take you through what have been the emerging trends in india i think uh, i think india is india is india like everywhere else in the world is going through a very very interesting time when it comes to you know cloud kitchens um you know my favorite being um, uh, you know burger king went ipo a uh, few days back two or three days back that ipo in india got oversubscribed that got subscribed 156 times and a day before that ipo wendy's which is the largest uh, uh, third largest burger chain in the world they announced a partnership with rebel foods rebel foods is are the parent company for fasos and behros biryani and and oven story pizza and and they they run a couple of brands and wendy's entered into an agreement with rebel to open and operate 250 cloud kitchen uh, cloud kitchens for wendy's operations uh, that means wendy's in india in next one year is going to be available like they are they're going to pop up in no time across india uh, you know at all aggregator apps at all uh, at all places wendy's you know on their own website and on their own app will add tons of areas you know they will cover almost you know they'll be pan india truly and uh, you know that was a that was a quite an amazing move because that tells you that on one side you know somebody like burger king is going ipo with you know with a, such a massive presence they set up they spent uh, you know quite a lot of money in last you know 2 3 years and and there comes a rival uh, you know who is trying to ride over the cloud kitchen wave and trying to probably set up 5x the number of stores than burger king uh, you know in one shot right so that so that exactly how the i mean how powerful you know this can be like bite foods which is uh, dabur in india uh, you know has uh, plans to strengthen its cloud kitchen its its cloud kitchen operations it has been in the in the media like bite foods has as also probably on the cloud kitchens and uh, wow momos uh, you know our own momos guy has raised uh, you know money uh, you know right in the center of pandemic or rather we 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 are still going through pandemic uh, they have raised money i think a large part of you know what all is happening here you will see you will find the roots in the cloud kitchen expansion you will find roots uh, you know where these guys are talking about increased sales of pandemic they are talking about not only achieving 100% of pre covid numbers but they are talking about achieving 120 130 in some cases 150% of pre covid numbers uh, you know they might not be the pressure on margins is going to be higher uh, because online deliveries you know cloud kitchen is is a high pressure business but at the same time this is this is going to be uh, according to me this is the time you know for cloud kitchen in the world i will um, 
I will just take 30 more seconds. Um, I will end this by saying that, um, uh, you know, for all the entrepreneurs and the, and the investors, Mr. Rajan, if you can mute your mic, it is, it is echoing. Yeah. So, uh, you know, for all the entrepreneurs and investors, uh, you know, uh, watching, I can only say that uh, uh, one thing, which is also a shameless plug for me, but not only because, you know, we sell technology, but also because all this revolution is happening at the back of technology. When you open a high street restaurant, technology was a good to have or probably a little bit of a must have. But when you are talking about cloud kitchens, it is technology first. If you are not leveraging technology, if orders are not landing at in a fraction of second at your restaurant, at your kitchen, if orders are not leaving your kitchen within the 17th minute, uh, you know, of receiving the order, you will never be able to deliver it within 30 minutes. And if you are not able to deliver it within 30 minutes, uh, your your future for cloud kitchen is going to be. Uh, you know, really, really bad because your competitors are doing an excellent job. Uh, always remember that Pizza Hut was always known uh, for dine-in pizza, but Domino's was always known, uh, you know, for delivery. And the only difference between Pizza Hut and Domino's delivery is five minutes. Uh, if you order Domino's, pizza will be on your plate in 29th minute. If you order Pizza Hut, poor guys still deliver it in 35 minutes. Uh, but this five minutes has costed Pizza Hut you know, a fortune when it comes to delivery business and has made a fortune for Domino's and then will continue to do so. Uh, thanks a lot, guys. I'm, I'm available on, on LinkedIn and Twitter. Uh, you know, do connect, do give me feedback. Uh, you know, happy to answer any questions uh, for anyone. Thank you, Ashish. Your time metrics are excellent takeaways, not only in Southeast Asia, DC, but it's in India, of course. Time is uh, very valuable. Yeah. So how do you think post COVID uh, the market is going to be bullish because it's going to be a billion dollar, multi-billion dollar market of cloud kitchen? hundred percent. I think uh, a market is going to be, uh, you know, quite, quite solid. If you will, if you will see one stat here, um, uh, you know, uh, so by uh, 2024 cloud kitchen market alone is, uh, you know, slated to be at least $2 billion market. Uh, you know, which is barely a four hundred million dollar in two thousand nineteen, and and by that, uh, what we mean is you can you can look at the amount of business which Swiggy and Zomato's you know they, they keep publishing uh, the amount of business they are doing. I think this is going to go by you know multi folds. You can already see uh, Dipinder Goel uh, of Zomato. I, I think last month or two months back, he posted that they have already crossed pre COVID number in delivery orders, and I think they were operating at some one hundred twenty percent. And I'm sure this this might have improved further. So I think I'm extremely bullish. I think uh, post COVID, or rather right now, is the best time to be in food business. Uh, not for margins. I think the I think one change which is which has already happened in the restaurant industry is that restaurant industry is not going to remain as glamorous as it used to be. Uh, the restaurant industry was known. Uh, for making 85% margins, 65% margins. People used to talk about, oh, you know, this dal makhani which somebody is selling for 500 bucks, this only cost 30 rupees or 50 rupees. Uh, not anymore. Not not anymore. I think I think that wasn't also true, by the way. But at least there used to be 25-35% margins. Uh, this industry, the margins are going to shrink to a level that is. This is going to become as less glamorous as a retail business, but. Uh, but it is going to become 4x the volume of an average retail business. So, so I think I think uh, for for entrepreneurs who are really serious about it, this is this is the perfect time to start. So, what's your post-COVID plans for Possist? Um, I think, Mr. Rajan, we um, you know at Possist we have sailed through the COVID times. I can safely say that we have sailed very very well, and I think we have sailed well at the back of. You know some very good brands we work with some very good customers who you know not only kept their business steady they kept faith in us steady and i think they have doubled down on technology i think we have made more sales uh, by selling more technology to our existing customers uh, you know in last six months and actually that became one of the bigger reasons of surviving as an organization continuing our health um, but i think um, Post COVID, or rather, you know, world from now on, 21, 22, year 21, 22, I think we believe that we are going to do 4x, uh, you know, the business which we did so far. Um, uh, you know, only on the back of this hybrid of cloud kitchen and, and different models in cloud kitchen 
and brands i mean the way brands are expanding right now earlier I, i'll give you one example earlier when we used to for example we work with taco bell in india uh, and i'm i'm just quoting the name but i'm not i'm not i mean my example not, may not really fit them earlier my fondest hope when i sign a taco bell in india is that one day taco bell will go from uh, 50 stores to 500 stores but but we all know practically that that will require an amount of investment on taco bell side that probably this is a five year plan what i believe is that today if taco bell wants to go from 50 stores to 500 locations probably that can happen in 1/10th or 1/5th the cost that means the same growth can be achieved in less than 2 years and and that that is how we believe that we are going to grow you know at fastest also uh, you know globally covid has done one thing it has really flattened the world in the true sense so today when i speak to a restaurant here in south africa in russia in us in canada in middle east in india all of them have the same problem all of them want the same solution um, and if you are able to give it to them uh, they're good nobody is now talking about oh this does not happen in my country or oh this happens very differently in my country everywhere covid has united everyone in the problem I, i think i think we are trying to unite them in the solution the world is united no because of pandemic <laughs> thank you ashish great insights for the indian entrepreneurs venturing into cloud kitchens thank you thanks thanks for your persistence i think we end the session go for the next thank you thanks for the opportunity thank you